Shalom, shalom everybody. Welcome back to another Pulse of Israel, Israel at War update. And today I am speaking to you from the airport. I am finally going home. A week and a half speaking tour, mostly West Coast. One day here on the East Coast speaking at Staten Island. Lots of meetings, great people trying to spread the message, inspire people with a politically with the politically incorrect truth about what's going on with Israel and the Jewish people and of Israel. And I think Rabbi Shai Shachter, who I interviewed this morning on Facebook, and I'll put the video out on my PulseOfIsrael.com website as well, said it very, very well. He said, those of those Americans and American Jews specifically who are visiting Israel during this war right now, they get to feel the inspiring spirit of the Jewish people and how we are dealing with and overcoming the sadness and the tragedy. Again, we have that sadness, we have that tragedy, but there's an inspiring, uplifting spirit of the Jewish people in the land of Israel that those who are, are, have not visited Israel do not feel and sense and being bombarded with the media, and it's mostly all negative media, against Israel and against what we're doing to not only protect ourselves and our families and our children from the evil we're up against, but we, our holy idea of soldiers fighting in a battlefield of hell, of evil, are standing up for the whole freedom-loving world, and yet we're being bashed in the media 24-7 around the world. And that's what most people hear and, uh, and, and Jews around the world are hearing, hence they're not able to sense and internalize and be part of this amazing spirit that we the Jewish people in the land of Israel are experiencing. Unfortunately over the past few days we've lost too many soldiers, too too many uh, holy IDF soldiers and unfortunately once again it boils down to while our soldiers are fighting like lions like with the King David spirit of the proud Jews once again are in our indigenous homeland we know what we're fighting for we know why we're fighting we know who we're fighting against we know it's evil we're trying to be as moral as possible but unfortunately pressures beyond us are are, are making us unfortunately po here and there be use tactics that endanger our own soldiers lives because more of a concern for the enemy whether because of international pressure or whatever that's our reality but our holy, holy soldiers, they're fighting for all of us, for the whole freedom-loving world, and everyone, don't forget it. And that's what you tell everyone when they complain about what Israel is doing in Gaza and what the Israeli soldiers are doing. No, they are holy warriors standing up against one of the most evil regimes that exist today that use their own children and women as human shields that educate their children and women to be proud to be human shields to die as martyrs as so so they can kill jews that's the evil we're up against and unfortunately that's not given across in the messages in the media now i want to talk to you about the mother of one of the hostages uh, a number of days ago this mother spoke to soldiers who were part of the unit that accidentally shot and killed her son together with two other hostages and I spoke about this at the time because these soldiers were getting blasted again by the media totally disregarding the evil hellish reality they're living with with Hamas terrorists coming out of windows coming out of the ground using innocent civilians to distract the soldiers so that the soldiers don't shoot using Alliance, 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 in the airport, using Alliance, civilians Alliance, even sometimes to wave white flags to, to, to confuse our holy IDF soldiers. So unfortunately, those three hostages were shot, even though our soldiers in split seconds made the decision, are making decisions to save lives. And unfortunately, that was a decision they wish they would have done differently, but they are not to blame. Hamas is to blame for putting them in that situation. And this mother spoke to those uh, holy idea of soldiers part of that unit and told them that she is not angry at them she blames Hamas as opposed to the media that p that painted the picture that the, the soldiers should be to blame she specifically spoke Hello, and said no Baron I am Paul, not angry Baron at Paul, any of those soldiers involved in that incident the ones responsible for the for the murder 
of her son and those other two hostages are Hamas for kidnapping them, for bringing them to that hellhole, for torturing them, for putting them in a situation where, where the Israeli soldiers do not know whether they are hostages or Hamas terrorists. So that is a very, very touching and important message that all of you should know about as well from the mother of one of those hostages killed in that incident. Now, I want to raise some other issues having to do uh, not specifically with the war, but the day after the war or a continuation of the war, because I always tell you a lot of Israelis have woken up and realized there's no difference between the Arab Muslims who live in, Ju in Judea and Samaria than those who live in Gaza. And just as the ones in Gaza identify with the genocidal culture of Hamas and supported the murder and brutality and burning and massacring of innocent Jews and babies and children and mothers and grandmothers, so too their brethren in Judea and Samaria. Uh, the level of support for that genocide is over 75% from the Arab Muslim population in Judea and Samaria. It's disgusting. It's sick. This is what we're living with. And hence, the Israeli government ordered the army to do a special army exercise preparing for a potential terrorist attack on one of the Jewish communities in Judea and Samaria. Now listen to this. The order was not just terrorists, but also terrorists from the Palestinian Authority, as if they would be taking part in the attack. So the army did the army exercise, but they didn't do it following the orders of the government. Here we are at the airport, so forgive me for the noise in the, in the background. So the Knesset, the government, called the heads of the army that were involved in that exercise to the, to the Knesset and said, why didn't you follow our orders? What didn't they do? They only did the exercise as if individual terrorists attacked the Jewish community in, in Judea and Samaria. They did not include in that exercise as if the terrorists from the Palestinian Authority were part of the attack. And they said, why didn't you do that? They asked the, the IDF commanders involved in that exercise, why didn't you do that? And the IDF commander said, well, we're not going to do that until you, the government, change official policy that, that identifies the Palestinian Authority as an enemy. Until you identify them officially as an enemy, we're not going to be doing well, any IDF exercises uh, playing uh, out as if they're an enemy. Do you hear that? It's insane. Like, first of all, obviously, I agree. The government should finally, following... Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's words himself just a few weeks ago, where he said the only difference between Hamas and the Palestinian Authority is their strategy to destroy Israel. So it's known that they want to destroy Israel. It's known that all of their armed forces are, that are training with U.S. guns and U.S. training are being trained to one day turn on us. And they even were, 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 were celebrating that one of their units took part in, meaning one of the Palestinian Authority military units took part in the massacre on Simchat Sarah on October 7th. So yes, a government decision should be made that the Palestinian Authority should be treated, should be designated an enemy. But regardless of that, the government gave, it, gave an order, army exercise, including the Palestinian Authority forces uh, being part of the terrorists attacking a Jewish community. And the army commanders ignored that order. This is symbolic of the problem we have. The army generals, commanders, who for 30 years have been responsible for giving experts advice that led to October 7th, ignoring all the intelligence about their plans, about how evil they are, about the fact that they want to destroy us any day. Flight, well, and also the these same, the same uh, security experts, anyone who knows when, or anyone who doesn't know when Obama was president, Prime Minister Netanyahu at the time had a plan to attack the Iranian nuclear plants, and it was Israeli generals or the heads of, of intelligence who leaked that plan to the Obama administration on purpose, which led the Obama administration to pressure Netanyahu to drop the plan and drop the attack. So some of those people up there at the top of the security and intelligence establishment, they are not working to, with our best interests. They might think they are, but they're not, and they, they, they've, been work, they've been undermining Prime Minister Netanyahu for years, and Netanyahu has known this, hence the challenge he's had of military strategies through all these years of doing what he's doing in Gaza, because he's never believed that they really would take out Hamas. Now, because of what happened on October 7th, finally the army has to do it, because the people finally want it, and they want it to be ended for good. But this is the reality we are working with, and at that same, on that same uh, issue of, 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 of undermining from within 
there was an Israeli reporter who admitted, right? He admitted that certain secret information from a cabinet meeting was leaked to him about what ministers had said and threatened one of the ministers that if she wouldn't apologize for what she said in a secret cabinet meeting, then he would blast her and, and, and delegitimize her. That is bribing the politicians. That's a journalist taking advantage and bribing politicians. Besides the fact that showing that there were military officials who are leaking this information to the journalists. It is insane. It's an undermining from within. And again, most of our soldiers, most of our commanders are unbelievable people, unbelievable committed, motivated. Unfortunately, all it takes is a few bad apples on top who for years have been causing problems. We're going to overcome them. We will overcome them. All right, understand that. But and no, this is the reality that we in Israel have been dealing with for decades. For decades. So when you, when you think about why Israel hasn't taken care of Hamas up until now, why haven't we ended the enemy? Why haven't we ended the Palestinian Authority and declared it a, 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 an enemy? Well, it's not just because we have weak politicians. It's because we have weak heads of army intelligence services together with journalists who undermine the ways that our right-wing conservative governments have wanted to take care of our enemy properly. Understand that. But that's it. It's over. Even though they're still in their positions and they could still cause problem, their days of undermining the proud Jewish people of Israel will be coming to an end. How it will come to an end? When it will come to an end? I don't know, because they're going to protect themselves. When this war ends and there are commissions and investigations and inquiries, they're going to be protecting themselves. Because again, the journalists are going to be protecting these top security officials. So it's not going to be so easy, but we will overcome. We will overcome. This is a spiritual battle, and it's up to us to unify and strengthen our Jewish identity. And we will overcome the people, the proud Jewish people of the land of Israel, we will overcome both our external enemies and the internal challenges and subversion within. Remember everyone, Am Israel Chai. Signing off for my last video on this trip here outside the holy borders of the holy land of Israel. Next time, from the holy land of Israel. If you are not yet a subscriber of the Pulse of Israel, go to pulseofisrael.com and click to subscribe. And if you enjoy and if you think it's important to hear for people to hear these messages, again, the inspiring, politically incorrect truth that doesn't get spread out in the media, well, go every once in a while, click donate on the donate button on pulseofisrael.com. Shalom, everyone. Pulse of Israel, frontline videos from the Holy Land. Support our work by donating today.